Property tax bills can be complicated things to understand, all the services they support, as well as how they're calculated. And this year, there is a line item that's caused some confusion. And so to answer all these questions is Vandenberg County Auditor, Joe Grease. Thank you for being with us today. My pleasure. So, Joe, tell us. I, obviously, this is a big undertaking from your office sure. and a lot of things, a lot of questions that come up. But how, what do property taxes actually go to pay? Essentially, essentially uh, property taxes are, are used to fund local government. Um, property taxpayers can see on their tax bill uh, the different categories uh, such as the city government, uh, county government, uh, school corporation, uh, things uh, like the library, uh, the uh, uh, information or the uh, taxes that go to uh, fund things like debt uh, that the county or the city would incur. Uh, a lot of a range of, of uh, different types of uh, funding there. So, so each of those organizations and as taxing units, they mm -hmm. um, have a specific tax rate that goes into a total tax rate. That's this correct. year's total tax rate is approximately well, two dollars and. 50 cents approximately? It depends on where you live. Okay. Uh, each taxing district has their own taxing, uh, tax rate uh, and it can range from uh, I believe about 1.7 uh, percent up to uh, almost 2.8 uh, percent. Okay. Uh, so there is a range there depending on where you live uh, in the city or the county. Sure. Mm -hmm. how, do, how do you compute these rates? That's a question we get a lot. Um, there are essentially three parts to that. Uh, the tax rate is uh, uh, calculated from the assessed value uh, within the taxing district or the taxing units uh, uh, purview uh, divided uh, into their certified levy or what they need to uh, fund for their budget, a, a, a portion of their budget, uh, which is set uh, in conjunction with the taxing unit and the, and the state, the, the Department of Local Government Finance. So there, are, there's the, this oversight, yes. not just from the local units, but also from the state and, and DLGF. That's correct. Right? The DLGF does have to approve budgets, local budgets, uh, and they go through that process. And then the uh, the state actually calculates those rates with the information that uh, we send to them uh, concerning the assessed values, and uh, then the local units sending up their budget information. On this year' bills, there's a line. It says adjustment to cap due to voter-approved projects and charges. That's correct. What is that? Uh, essentially, uh, the uh, uh, referendum rate, uh, as it's referred to, um, is outside of the normal property tax caps. Uh, most taxpayers, uh, I'm sure, are aware by now that we have certain levels that cap property taxes. Uh, this rate falls outside of those caps because of the uh, voter referendum approved uh, referendum. So that rate is in addition to what they may see as far as their cap at one, two, or three percent. And that's based on state statute. Correct? That's correct. So when did these caps come into play? The caps uh, have been around for a few years, three or four years. Now they've been uh, gradually over the years uh, have dropped down to the current levels of one percent for homestead type properties, uh, two percent for residential uh, agricultural type properties, and then three percent for uh, properties commercial and industrial. But it was just in 2010 in which they fell under the Constitution, correct? That's correct, yes. So now we have these mandatory caps in the Constitution. That's right. And from your perspective, what, what was the reason behind the constitutional perspective of caps? They, I believe they wanted to, to uh, get those into the Constitution to make it harder for those to be uh, legislated away. Uh, now, once they're in the Constitution, for those to be changed or removed, uh, the uh, legislature has to go through a two-year process of uh, taking or changing uh, those caps, uh, which is a little bit more difficult, uh, and and then uh, also would have to be a back again on on the uh, uh, approved by the voters uh, in a referendum. Joe, how, how does assessed valuation affect tax rate? The assessed valuation is one of the key parts of that. Uh, as the assessed valuation changes, uh, that uh, affects the rate. Uh, it's what is divided into the certified levy uh, to come up with that rate to fund a, a local taxing unit's budget. Um, and so it's a, it's a big portion of that calculation. And, and the fluctuations in that assessed value uh, affect that very much. And we've seen dramatic decreases in assessed valuation over the last three or four years? Over the last few years, the, the total assessed value for the county and within uh, the city and, and the taxing districts has changed, has gone down uh, largely, I believe, because of uh, the property values in this area as well as the state and all across the country uh, have, have dropped. Yeah, because we can go back just to 2007 and see 
a assessed valuation of for the school district about eight point two billion dollars mm -hmm. and in 2011 we're looking at about six point nine billion dollars so right. substantial obviously there are there are a lot of things that you've already described mm -hmm. that go into this tax rate mm -hmm. and and determining property taxes mm -hmm. what other th what other things we talk about assessed valuation mm -hmm. changing mm -hmm. what other things have changed in 2011 pay 2010 mm -hmm. right that perhaps weren't in place in 09. Right. Uh, one of the biggest changes uh, taxpayers will see on their bill this year uh, is a, uh, a loss of, if they have a homestead deduction filed, uh, they, they lost a, a state uh, credit that was applied uh, in previous years, the last three years. Uh, that credit was designed uh, to uh, last only three years. Uh, Vandenberg County received uh, money uh, from the state to offset property taxes uh, uh, be, for the homestead properties, and this is the first year where they don't see that. That's a state perspective, that correct? That is correct. That so, is changed by the state. There's nothing that was done locally uh, and, and nothing that we could uh, we could have changed. Well, thanks for all you do, and I appreciate you being pleasure. on Education Matters. My pleasure. Great. Coming up after the break, a look back at the strategic plan referendum in November of 2008.